are we headed? We're going to go this way and then we're going to cut down. Assistant wildlife biologist Michaela Bivona is leading the porcupine survey from the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife's Prineville office. We've talked to a lot of people locally here in Central Oregon. The study area actually also goes way up to the Dalles, but we've talked to people here. And people who have lived there their whole lives have told us, you know, I used to see them all the time and they used to ruin my trees. And now that you say it, I haven't seen one in 10 years and I don't know why. Porcupine numbers are declining, but how much nobody can say because no local studies have ever been conducted and there's no baseline data about the prickly rodents. You see there's a little clump up there that looks a little fuzzy. Yes, yeah. yes, I do see it now. That's up, a porcupine. Up two thirds of the way yeah. for the branches. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you guys are so lucky. You <laughs> this are. Is well. Big. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for uh, you know scheduling the oh, uh, yeah. porcupine in the tree for us to see. I know. I know. I brought one out here and shoved it up there. Not many people realize that porcupines like to climb and sleep in trees. The next time you're out for a walk in the woods, look up. You might be surprised yeah. by what you see. They find a nice resting branch and they'll essentially like just find something that's comfortable and they'll literally just slump over it. And they'll like, I'll, when we were here and we saw it, we were hooting and hollering and being loud and that thing was knocked out. Did not care that we were there at all. So they're really funny. Yeah, they sleep pretty hard, <laughs> I think. Biologists began the survey by scanning iNaturalist for pictures citizen scientists have taken of porcupines and posted on the popular sharing app. The research is expanding to include the use of trail cameras to verify reports of porcupine activity. We had some people tell us, yeah, you used to not be able to drive on 97 without hitting a porcupine. There were so many of them, or they were in our ag field so much that we were really having problems with them eating our alfalfa or all of these stories that we've gotten. Some are funny, some are sad, of course, um, but we've gotten a lot of that. And it is really heartwarming how many people have reached out to me and people have called me and said, oh my goodness, I saw a porcupine last night. It was crossing the road and almost everybody explains that it had a really cute waddle. They waddle kind of as they walk down the road. So they're a pretty charismatic species that I think a lot of people are getting excited about now that we're taking a harder look at them. A few facts about porcupines. In winter, they eat the bark of trees. In summer, they eat grasses and forbs. Female porcupines give birth to one baby per year. Baby porcupines are called porcupettes. You do not want to cuddle a porcupine as cute as porcupette sounds. They still have quills. <laughs> um, yeah, so their quills are really interesting, actually. They have over 30,000 of them that cover the back of their neck down to their, to their tail, and um, they're barbed also. So they're really difficult to pull out once they attach to something. So that's where a lot of people have to bring their dogs to the vet and have them sedated in order to remove a lot of them. Porcupines do not throw their quills. The quills need to be pushed into something such as a dog's nose before they'll release. Porcupines can slap their tails, which increases the possibility of their barbed quills making contact and sticking in whatever is threatening them. They're viewed as a pest by a lot of people, and what they do is they damage trees, and they can actually end up killing a tree if they're feeding on it too extensively, so people get concerned about that. But the main thing that I recommend to people is to get aluminum flashing and wrap it around the base of the tree and make sure you're cutting any limbs that are hanging low that they can pull themselves up on, because they are excellent climbers and they cannot grip on that aluminum flashing so if they can't get up they'll move on to a different tree that they can more easily access. Until there is more data available it's difficult to say why porcupine numbers have declined but being hit by cars is likely a contributing factor. They're so small they're slow moving and they're dark um, that's obviously a part of why they get hit so often but also their first reaction is to not run away, and even if they could, they're not running very quick. So their first reaction is to turn their back, and unfortunately that doesn't work on a lot of vehicles. So it's just something that I try to give them a shout out to tell people, you know, be a little mindful as you drive near canyon areas or anywhere that you might see wildlife crossing. Keep an eye out for the big elk, the big deer, but also for the little guys like porcupines. The Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife is working with the High Desert Museum to train volunteers how to set up trail cameras and document the presence of porcupines. The research will be similar to the recent Sierra Nevada Red Fox project to which volunteers made significant contributions. Looks smaller, 
and it looks darker and I do wonder, we've gotten a mom with her porky pet on camera here. So I'm wondering if that's her baby, if it's finally figured out how to climb a tree. But man, what a good day. <laughs> this is sweet. <laughs> yeah. From a porcupine survey site near Pal Butte, I'm Brooks Navely for The Great Outdoors.